Computer systems in cars, the new normal. Advanced tech's expensive. It breaks. Fix it. CarShield.com, code HERD, or call 800-CARS-6000, code HERD. I am taking one small suitcase. I will put it on my social media. One small suitcase to the Super Bowl. Joy is taking three large suitcases, one just for shoes. That is the difference. And by the way, I am proud of it. I may just take a handbag just to flaunt it. I don't, under I don't understand. You're going to be there for so long. Like, no one would judge you if you brought a regular bag, even just one regular no, bag. Nobody would judge me if I took a small bag and wore the same jeans for four days. No, I mean, not judging you. I'm just saying, like, it's not unreasonable for you to, have, to bring a big bag. You're going to be there for, what, nine days? I'll tell you what's unreasonable. Going down to that carousel and waiting for an hour. Not interested yeah, whatsoever. I mean, it's not my favorite thing to do, but sometimes <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> All right, listen, this story is veering into fake news territory. Nick Wright in less than 10 minutes. Uh, Tom Brady, there was something on Instagram yesterday. He's walking around a park or something like that, and somebody has, don't leave Tom in New England. And there's a lot of speculation on where he's going. And this story has always been bigger, broader, and greater than I thought it would be. I think he should retire now. He doesn't want to. Play one more year in New England and retire. Albert Breer came on yesterday and said, for all those who are naming Indianapolis and Los Angeles, Albert said, you got to consider this. He has a kid who lives in New York. His son, Jack, lives in New York City. And I think ultimately because of that, because Giselle likes New York City, that's eventually going to be where they're going to settle. So let's just put this in real life terms for you, right? Say you didn't know where you were going to work over the next year, but you did know where your family is going to be for the next 20 years. What would you do with your family? You'd probably move them to where they were going to be for the next 20 years and say, you know what, I'm going to be the one who's going to move around over the next year or two while I continue to work. Yeah, I think there are some winning situations out there, but I, I don't think he's just going to go somewhere to go somewhere. All right, there's three or four reasons why I think he's staying in New England. Number one, if Tom Brady left the Patriots, it would be a $13.5 million cap hit. Have you followed Bill Belichick's career? Does he like paying for players? No, especially ones he doesn't have. You think Belichick's going to want to incur a almost $14 million cap hit for a guy not on his team? That is so not Belichick. Number That's like Rob Parker having to pay $2 for a bottle of water, not one. Some people are frugal. Belichick's one of them. Number two is they don't have a succession plan. I mean, again, if they had Jimmy Garoppolo in the backyard throwing the football, I'd buy it. They don't. Number three is, I don't think there's a massive market. The position is changing. It's getting more mobile. It's getting more athletic. Um, there's not a lot of good offensive lines. Tom's a liability if you don't have a great O-line. And the Cowboys, to me, has always been the place I thought, oh, those, those linemen or the Colts, that would fit. Uh, I, think, I still think Indianapolis is the best fit. But here's the other thing. Let's not over-exaggerate New England's fall. They were 12-4. and four. They were a dumb loss to Miami from having a playoff bye. Three of their four losses were to Baltimore, Kansas City, and Houston, division winners. The previous year, they lost five games, ugly games, and won the Super Bowl. The other thing is that Tom needs wide receivers and a tight end. There's all sorts of guys on the market this year. Hunter Henry's available. He's a free agent. A.J. Green, Robbie Anderson for the Jets, Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper, uh, Eric Ebron. There's an Austin Hooper. There's Emmanuel Sanders. There's all sorts of guys available, smart veterans who could fit right in. But I want you to think about this for a second. This is a big deal. Uh, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, Starbucks, the first store, 1971, across from Pike Place Market. Still there. Uh, I also grew up in a city, uh, Seattle, It had Amazon that started as an online bookstore. I also lived in Tampa where Outback Steakhouse, the very first one, was right across from WTVT, the TV station for Fox I worked for. When you start a business and you want it to be domestic or global, and in Brady's TV 12 protein powders, shakes, that stuff, he wants it to be domestic, and because his wife is a global star, he'd like to branch it out to be a global empire. He just got it in to Whole Food stores in Connecticut. They could take any protein powder. There's hundreds of them on the market. But Tom was able to get his TB12 protein stuff, his brand, into Whole Foods. That's a big deal in the New England region. Okay, Starbucks had to figure out Seattle before it went domestic and global. Amazon had to win Seattle first. Outback had to win Tampa, Orlando, and Florida first. Tom, because he has an international star as a wife, sees his brand as large domestic but potentially global. 
if Tom whizzes on New England and leaves for $4 million more to go to Indianapolis, that Whole Foods TB12 thing in New England, people won't buy it. Tom's going to make a lot more money potentially, and I'm not joking. If TB12 hits, he's going to make a lot more money there than he's going to make playing football, and I'm not joking. Jeff Bezos, you know, all these Elon Musk guys make more in an hour than Tom makes in a, you know, a year. So this is a story. He just got all his stuff into Whole Foods in New England. They want to get it in Whole Foods domestically and then, you know, make it global. Why fight over Nichols when you have a global potential TB12 brand that you just started in the New England region? I don't think he bolts. I think he stays for a year. He's got his business. His family's in New York. I think it's a real unspoken truth about this. Tom's about business now. He wasn't. Then he beat Atlanta in the Super Bowl, and we all watched Tom really then open up and say, hey, listen, he, I'm in the back nine of my career. He didn't do commercials that much. He did Uggs. He did a Visa commercial. But once he beat Atlanta, Tom started doing documentaries and started talking about his businesses and did more commercials. Tom now knows he's got a year or two left. This TB12 brand is his baby. He just got it into Connecticut, you know, New England, Massachusetts, Whole Foods. Why whiz on that? Stay in New England a year. You visit the stores. You spike sales like a Dunkin' Donuts. 25 years later, Dunkin' Donuts is not a New England coffee. It's a national coffee. Joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Derek Jeter was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame yes. in his first year of eligibility. He received 99.7% of the vote, which left him one vote shy of being unanimously voted in. He would have joined former teammate Mariano Rivera as the only players to receive 100% of the vote. Yeah. So 396 of 397 votes once again. Baseball Hall of Fame voters making it about them. No big deal. This is new. <laughs> I don't understand. First of all, it's, it, here's the thing. Babe Ruth, 11 people didn't vote for Babe Ruth on the first ballot. Ted Williams only got 94%. Is it really a story? No one, I don't, Derek, okay, so Derek Jeter said on not getting the unanimous selection, do you know how hard it is to get that many people to agree on anything? Thank you. It takes a lot of votes to get elected into the Hall of Fame. I'm just extremely excited and honored to be elected, which is the perfect thing to say because, of course, who cares? And I understand you know, not getting in year after year in any kind of Hall of Fame is taxing and it's, you know, you get your hopes up and then you get let down. So when you do get in, that becomes a, a, a thing. And being right. elected on your first year of eligibility is obviously a huge honor. But once you're in, you're in. So, you know, it, the, the idea that he had to be unanimous because Joe, Rivera was uh, unanimous Joe is like... Joe DiMaggio, Derek Jeter was not the greatest shortstop ever. Mariano is the... Greatest closer by a mile ever. Joe DiMaggio didn't get voted in multiple times. Who cares if one person didn't vote for him? The only reason this is a story is because it was a conversation that he should be unanimous. Oh, he's not. So I mean, now Ken he's Griffey not unanimous. It's uh, now a story. Listen, I love Derek Jeter. But Cal Ripken hit for more power and lasted longer. Ozzie Smith was a better fielder. De I love Derek Jeter, okay? Not the best shortstop ever. Ken Griffey wasn't unanimous. Ted Williams wasn't. Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth. Of all the great superstars that have ever, ever played this game, there's only ever been one that was unanimous, and it was Mariano Rivera. Th so I, I don't, it's it's not a story. It doesn't matter. It doesn't but matter. just because everyone assumes that he was going to be unanimous, that, that it's if a thing. And congrats to Larry Walker also, if, who, who was also yeah, selected. If Ted the Williams fans. doesn't get in, the best hitter of all time, then I don't know who cares. I mean, they, 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 by the way, this is not. I mean, Derek Jeter played for the A's. He'd be probably a Hall of Famer on the ninth ballot. Part of what made Derek Jeter great is when he hit a double, there were guys on base. They were called all stars because the Yankees <laughs> had. Remember, in Derek's prime, the Yankees had such a cap. There was no baseball, has no salary cap. But it wasn't until the last six or seven years with regional networks that other people could spend big money. Jer Derek Jeter's peak years, he was surrounded by nine All-Stars. The faces were jammed when he's hitting doubles. And yeah, I'm not saying he's not... Yeah, you those rosters, it should clear everything up. <laughs> no, and that's not taking anything away from Derek Jeter. He is a Hall of Famer. He yes. is a first ballot Hall of Famer. And it's all fine. It's going to be okay. It's not a distant... I, I mean, like, even Patrick Mahomes tweeted about it. How is Derek Jeter not unanimous? By the way, is Derek Jeter last four or five years didn't have a bunch of range. 
you know, there were there were a lot of people that felt at the end that A-Rod was a more talented player, but A-Rod, they moved him to third. A lot of people think A-Rod was a better, greater, natural, talented shortstop, so he didn't get every single vote. It's not a big deal. Like I said, it's only because yeah. it, the idea yeah. was that he would be because their cheater is beloved. So this year's draft has plenty of elite quarterback prospects, and one who decided to attend the Senior Bowl is Justin Herbert. In recent years, some prospects like Carson Wentz, Baker Mayfield, and Daniel Jones reversed the trend of skipping that event, and they made impressions that led them to being drafted in the top six. And Herbert says he hopes he can follow in their footsteps and be the next quarterback to improve his draft stock at this, the Senior Bowl. Jalen Hurts is also at the Senior Bowl. Says he has a boulder on his shoulder heading into the NFL. So... Bengals head coach Zach Taylor is coaching Herbert's team. Oh, well, they're not going to take him. They're, they're going to take Burrow. They're, they, they're petrified to tick off Ohio. They need to sell season tickets there. Burrow sells season tickets. No, no. You, you, you have, at this point. You got to take him. You ha if you I wouldn't, but in Cincinnati, they will. Cincinnati, I mean, there's a lot of teams that just basically you're, you're going to be passing up on, and I, I know you're much higher on Zion than Burrow, but the buzz around Burrow is yes. that much. Like, you can't be that team that passes on Burrow, although I'm still kind of hoping. There's a little story about the Dolphins out there that's kind of exciting. Finally, the Jaguars have found their next offensive coordinator. Jacksonville hired former Redskins head coach Jay Gruden to lead the offense in 2020. His last, his last offensive coordinator job was in Cincinnati from 2011 to 2013 before he got the head coaching spot in Washington. They went to the playoffs all three seasons that Gruden was the offensive coordinator, won the AFC North in 2013, yeah. lost in the wild card round each year. But um, see, that's the thing about Cincinnati. Like, you think that Cincinnati is a little dysfunctional, but they're not the Browns. Okay, time out. Think about this. Washington had Sean McVay let him go. Kyle Shanahan let him go. Matt LaFleur let him go. Jay Gruden, who I think is a really sharp offensive guy. Yeah, a lot of good play. Washington's let a lot of smart guys leave. That part. Yeah. I, I, I find this to be an interesting hire, though, because he, he has had some success as, as an offensive coordinator. Well, I think Jay Gruden's a really good play caller. And they have to figure out what's going on with Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew. They were 6-10 and 10 this year. But Jacksonville's another one of those teams that is very up and down. So yeah. this, is a, this is a good hire for them. Good stuff, Joy, with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The